Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of A Touch of Evil, The Banshee and here we are at turn one. So what I've decided to do, I was going to put each one of these guys, and well these gals, I was going to put them on one board each but you know what, before I start out ruling everything, before I even played it Let's just try it the way it's meant to be. So everybody's going to start here. But what I am going to do is I'm going to be strong. And I'm going to shove two of these on the other boards anyway. I just want to see how quick it is going to be. And whether it really affects gameplay or not. Uh, another thing I've done is uh, Sarah the Bright Witch has now got some blue around her base. So we know who she is. And Valeria obviously being a... Uh, Vampire, Eternal type, she's got red, just a bit of red round there, and we'll keep Eliza, the Witch Hunter, as white. So it's just easy to tell them apart. Okay, so we're going to start in the Town Hall here. Now, the first player was going to be Eliza, but I've changed that, I've put her to the last player. The reason for that is, if she was going to go first, and she was in the Town Hall with a Vampire and a Witch, well, she just start kicking off with them. So what we're going to have is <laughs> Eliza's going to be first. She's sort of the first that arrived at the town hall. And she's going to move out of the town hall before good old Eliza kicks off. So before she arrives, these two are going to sort of move off. So first thing we do is we go to the hero phase. And here we are at the hero phase. Not changed round much, has it? Well, it doesn't have to because what we're going to do in the hero phase, that's split up into several different sort of phases in itself, really. The first one is movement. You don't have to move, but if you stay where you are, you will have to roll a d6 because it's counted as lingering. And if you roll a 1 on that d6, it's bad. So what we're going to do, we're going to move anyway. I don't think there's any benefit from staying where we are. So let's roll for Sarah's movement. And she gets a five. That's fantastic. Right. What Sarah is going to do is she's going to make use of one of these secret passages. Now, she could go to the abandoned keep, which would take at Smuggler's Cove, or she could go to the manor, which would take her to Echo Lake. I think we'll take her to the manor. So she's going to go one, two, three, four. She doesn't have to move the whole five, so she's just going to stay at the manor. Now, she cannot use the secret passage this turn. You've got to start your movement on the manor, the abandoned keep, Smuggler's Cove, or the monastery. So you can't sort of move to the manor and then and then like complete your move by going over to the monastery you've got to start your movement here so she'll end here on the manor right what's next after that well she if there were any minions here she would have to fight them but there aren't any so that's fine so she can move on to actions now these aren't in any particular order but obviously as I'm going through them, I'm going to have to use some sort of order. So I'm going to use my cheat sheet order. So we can encounter the space. Now this is mandatory and you can only do it once. The only exception to this is if it's a showdown. A showdown is when you've cornered the villain and you've said, right, I'm going to take the villain on. Nowhere near that at the moment. We haven't bought a lair card or anything. So what we will do is we will encounter the space and the space is the manor. So let's zoom in on the manor. And here we are at the manor. So there are no, there's no text. So we just pick up a manor card. So here's the manor. So I have already shuffled in, but let's do it again for the sake of the laughs. And there we go very quickly and we'll cut it. And let's see what we get. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, it's Eliza. Eliza's after her. Beyond the lighted gate. Right, let's read this. 
Oh, this is a Coast card. You can see it's just got TC in the corner there. So this is a Coast expansion card. So this is Danger Void. Now it comes to it, the gaping void stands before you, shimmering with a cold hunger. If you enter the void, gain plus two plus one honour markers and remove your figure from the board. At the start of each mystery phase, roll 2d6. If you roll equal to or under your honour, gain five investigation. If you roll over your honour, take d3 wounds. Once your roll doubles on the dice, or if you're knocked out, place your figure back on the board at a random location. Well, what we're not going to do is we're not going to do it. Not first turn. <laughs> so we will leave that. It's an interesting thing because you can get a load of investigation. But you know what? Urgh. What I think we'll do is we'll avoid that. Yeah, so we won't do it. So you'll avoid the void, as it were. Avoiding the void. Okay, right, so we'll discard that. And we will put the deck back. So nothing too brilliant happening there, unfortunately. Right, oh. So she's encountered the space. What other options does she have? Well, she could collect investigation, but there aren't any. Uh, she could heal a wound, but there's no point in doing that because she hasn't got any wounds. Or she could investigate an elder. Now, that costs as many investigations as there are players. We've got three players and she's only got two investigation because you start the game with two investigation each. So, can't really do that either. And buying a lair card, we certainly can't do that because it costs 12 investigation at this stage of the game. And finally, we could we could start a showdown, except we can't because we haven't even got a lair card. So forget that as well. And the very last thing that I nearly forgot is we could exchange gear, but we are not on the same space as another character, so we cannot do that. So that is very quickly Sarah the Bright Witch's go. So she's moved to the manor and she's getting ready to move to the monastery next turn through the secret passage. Right, our next player then will be Valeria the Eternal. And here we are, back at the town hall and Valeria, she's going to go next. So again, we roll for movement. A four, that's good. We're doing well on the movement. So. She's rolled four, so she's going to go one, two, three, four, and move to the abandoned keep. The reason for that is there is a secret passage, and very much like Sarah, the Bright Witch, she will be able next turn on her movement to go to Smuggler's Cove and get to the coast board and investigate Tidewater. But before that, we have got to have... Uh, encounter and everything at the abandoned keep so let's zoom in and do that and here we are with Valeria at the abandoned keep radio let's chant the mantra first of all she's got to fight any minions that are there there are no minions there so we're fine right we move on to actions in no particular order except the order that I have them written down so first things first is encounter the space so there's no text or anything here so we just get an abandoned keep card here's the abandoned keep deck quick shuffle there we go and we'll give it a quick cut and see what we get the loveless pendant oh isn't it sad Right, oh, it's an item, and it's a relic. Oh, she's on fire. Plus two honor. Any time a mystery card is played, you may take a wound to place it here instead. If Loveless Pendant is discarded, all mystery cards here are played. All right, but she also gets plus two honor. So what does that change her honor to? She now has an honor of five. That is fabulous. So that is a really good start. 
I've put the loveless pendant next to her player area, so that's brilliant. Possibly will use it to um, soak up some mystery cards. Um, obviously don't want to discard it though, because we don't want all the mystery cards coming in in a big rush. So we'll play it by ear that one. Some really, really nasty mystery card comes along, then we'll put, we'll put that mystery on there. Otherwise, we might let it slide. Okay, so she's encountered the space. What is next? Well, if there were any investigation there, she could pick those up, but there aren't. If she had any wounds, she could try and heal her wounds by spending investigation, but she hasn't got any, so we're not going to do that. If we had enough investigation, we could reveal an Elder's secret, but we've only got two and we need three, so we're not going to do that either. Uh, we could buy a Lair card if we had 12 investigation. We do not. We could start a showdown, but we haven't even got a Lair card, so that's not going to happen. And last but not least, we could trade gear, but we're not on the same space as another hero. So that is the end of Valeria's hero phase. Next up, Eliza the Witch Hunter. And here we are with Eliza. Um, a bit later than advertised, had to go for my tea. But done that now. So we're still in the hero phase and it's Eliza's turn and she is here at the town hall. Okay, let's chant the mantra. First of all, movement. We'll get this and we'll get a die. And she rolls. And she gets a four. So that's pretty cool rolling on the old movement. But we don't need four because all we're doing is going one space. We're going from the town hall to the church. Why are we doing that? Well, it's because of this text at the church and uh, what happens. So we're going to do this because we can get a spirit here. If we get, if we spend two investigation, we get to do a spirit test, which is, well, no, we get to do an honor five plus test to get an extra spirit. We want an extra spirit for Eliza because she's at three. If she gets that extra spirit, she will move up to, to four spirit. And that means the Banshee's special ability of Spectre will mean she doesn't get extra combat dice against Eliza. So Eliza and Sarah will be immune from that Spectre attack. Coolness. Now you're probably wondering, why didn't I send Valeria there? Well, one, it's the church, but... <laughs> I had thought about like playing it that she wouldn't actually go in the church, um, Valeria. She'd sort of go into the graveyard to get her spirit. That was the way she'd get it from the church. But, uh, you know, perhaps she had a, re a relative buried there or something and um, she'd get the spirit that way. But um, what I thought was she's only got two spirit anyway. So even if she gains plus one spirit, she only goes up to three. So she's still not going to be immune from the Spectre ability. And, you know, let's get to another board. So, and, you know, we may pick up an item or something um, during our travels, which will pump up her, uh, her spirit. Very similar to that pendant. I mean, that gave her an extra two on her. So there must be something in the deck somewhere to give an extra two spirit. So we'll keep an eye out for something like that. So... Valeria is still going to go through the secret passage. But, back to Eliza. What's Eliza doing? Well, she's going to do that thing. Going to do the Honor 5 Plus test. See if we can gain one spirit. So, in order to do that, let's zoom in. And let's see if she can do it. Plus the fact we'll be able to read the text. And I'll be able to go through it properly. Okay, let's zoom in. And here we are with Eliza at the church. So the first thing we do is draw an event. Events are good. Cool. So we get the event deck. We'll give it a shuffle. I've already shuffled it, but we'll give it a further crappy shuffle. And a cut. There we go. And let's see what she draws. Ooh, this looks just a scratch. So event play this card when any hero town elder evil elder or the villain is about to take a wound prevent that wound i've had worse 
Cool. So that's a pretty good event card. So she'll get to keep that. I'll put it over on her player area. Very good. Righty-ho. So we've done that. So what's next? Train Spirit. Pay two investigation to make an honour 5 plus test. If successful, then gain one spirit. Now, her honour is two, unfortunately, but she does have her two starting investigation. So she's going to pay those, and we're going to see if she can get a five plus. A six. She rocks. Brilliant. So she'll get a spirit token, which are in here. So there we go, the double-sided, cunning on one side, spirit on the other. So her spirit is now four. That means the Banshee's special ability of Spectre will not affect Eliza. Brilliant. However, she now has no investigation left whatsoever. Right, so that is the end of the encounter. She's done the text encounter on the board. So what's next up? Let's have a look at the old cheat, stick, cheat sheet. Right, so she'd have to fight any minions, but there are none there. Her actions, in the order that I've got them written down on my cheat sheet, uh, encounter the space. Well, she's done that. That's brilliant. Uh, collect any investigation. There are none there. Heal a wound. She's not injured. Investigate an elder. Well, she's got no investigations left whatsoever after getting that spirit. So she can't do that. Uh, she can't buy a lair card. And she can't start a showdown because she hasn't got the wherewithal to buy a lair card. And she cannot exchange any goods or trade because nobody is on that space. So that is it for Eliza. And that is the end of the hero phase. So... Let's zoom out and let's get on with the A Touch of Evil laugh and chuckle phase. Yes, it's the mystery phase. Let's get back and have a look at the board. And here we are, back at sunny Shadowbrook. We may as well keep it on Shadowbrook. That's where all our heroes are at the moment. Right. The mystery phase. Yes, the A Touch of Evil version of the Laugh and Chuckle phase. Right, nothing good happens in the mystery phase. It's grim. Right, but let's chant the mantra for the mystery phase. First of all, any minions will move. We've got no minions on any of the board, but if they were, they would move closer to the town hall or closer to the town square in Tidewater, whichever is the nearer. If you actually have minions on the town hall or the town square and they have to move, then they get taken off the board. Now, that isn't as good as it sounds, because if they do get taken off the board, you will move the shadow track down one. So essentially, kill the minions, stop them getting to the town hall or the town square. That way you can try and control the shadow track. But fortunately, we haven't got any out yet, so that's good. Start of the mystery phase. Any knocked out heroes are revived. We haven't got any knocked out heroes, so that's pretty cool. The villain will heal. Well, the Banshee has took no wounds whatsoever, so that's fine. So we don't have to roll um, to heal the villain. Um, it'd be a D6. They'd, um, they'd get D6 wounds back. But, as I say, the Banshee, she's got her 12 wounds. She's fine. Right, oh. So after that, we roll on the mystery phase chart. So the one we're using is the advanced cooperative mystery phase chart. Nice and snappy title. So you have we roll two d6, and all these are horrendous. Tell you now, even if you roll a 12, it doesn't mean that you get away with anything. It's not like Shadows of Brimstone, where if you roll a 12, something funky happens. No, all these are appalling. So we've got a roll on this first. So let's use our special black dice and see what we get. 2d6. We get an 11. Oh dear, what's this? 
possessed by madness. Oh dear. Each hero must roll a d6 and add their... Oh, that's ambushing the night. Sorry. Every hero must immediately roll a d6 and add their honour. Whoever had the lowest result, roll off if tied, must immediately engage in a single fight round with the hero that has the highest result, roll off if tied. Each of these heroes gains one investigation for every hit they do to the other. Heroes may choose to roll fewer fight dice than they are normally allowed, but not fewer than their basic combat skill. Right, so let's see who the two are. It's the highest versus the lowest, and their honour. So we need one d6. Sarah, first player. Her honour is four. So it's four plus a two. So she's on six. Valeria has now has an honour of five. So she's got ten. Looks like she's going to be the highest. And Eliza has an honour of two. So she gets five. Did we get two fives there? No, Sarah started with four on her, didn't she? She didn't roll a one. So it's Eliza against... Eliza is taking on Vampira. Dun, dun, dun. right -o, let's just check exactly what goes on. We only do one round, I think. That's right. And we're obviously going to roll the fewest fight dice that we are allowed. So let's see what the combat skills are. Eliza is combat of two and Valeria is a combat of three. So we'll give Valeria the white dice and Eliza the black dice. We're not going to use any items or anything because obviously we want to try and minimise the amount of wounds that they're going to give each other. Right, that is bad. <laughs> Eliza must be pretty good at her job, a witch, witch hunter. She's got two hits. And unfortunately, she got a hit as well off Valeria. So that's two wounds for Valeria. Damn, damn, da damn, damn, damn. And one wound for Eliza. So, how do we allocate those investigations? It's for every hit they do to the other. So, that's two investigations. Well, at least she gets a two investigation back, Eliza, for doing two hits. But Valeria also gets an investigation as well, because she did a hit. So, she's up to three. Okay, but not ideal. We don't want people fighting each other, however much Eliza might want to kill the vampire. So, at least we've done that. That could have been worse. It's not been too bad. Nobody's been knocked out. Coolness. Right, but that's not the worst part. Yes, that was pretty bad, but we've still got the mystery card. Here's the mystery deck. And this too is appalling. Let me just check. Yep. Draw a mystery card. Crappy shuffle. Dee, 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 dee. There we go. And a cut. What are we going to get? No! No! A full moon. What's this? While this card is in play, all minions and werewolves are plus one combat. Also, when adding a transformation marker to a curse, add two instead. This remains in play. Grimness. Right, so all minions are going to get plus one, and we might end up being changed into werewolves or something. Crapness. Right, I'll put this down here at the front of the board so I don't forget so anything like this that remains in play I'll put down here 
at the front of the board. Right, damn, 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 damn. But other than that, nothing really bad happened. So, okay. Is there any way we can get rid of that card? I suppose we could put it on the pendant, but do you know what? There, in this game, there are chances where you know you're forced to actually give up investigation or items. Right at the beginning, we do not have. We've only got three. We've only got three investigation, and if we had to give up that item, then like you roll a d6 if you get knocked out. So say we roll the six. Uh, Valeria would have to get rid of the loveless pendant as it stands because she'd have to get rid of all three investigations plus that item card and that would mean this had come out anyway hmm should have get rid of it though yes sod it sod it that's what it's there for so we're gonna use the Loveless Pendant. Any time a mystery card is played, you may take a wound to play... Oh, no. She can't use it. She can't use it. The reason she can't use it is she's at two wounds, thanks to Eliza the Witch Hunter. So she took an extra wound and put this on the Loveless Pendant. She'd be knocked out, so we can't do that. Forget that. We're stuck with it. Right, so it'll be remaining in play. But other than that, Shadow Track hasn't moved. All is funky. Yep. Yeah. That seems pretty funky. So, yep, yeah, no problems whatsoever. That is okay. Yes, I think that's okay. So, that is the end of the mystery phase. Woohoo! How did the turn go? Well, obviously, a bit rusty. It's my first playthrough, but not too bad. I've been chanting my mantras for the hero phase and the mystery phase. I think I've got those right. Um, I think everything was in order. Um, we'll see, but hopefully, hopefully that was fine. Um, what else? D -d 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 what are we going to do next turn? Yeah. Well, move the first player marker for a start. So, Valeria will be our first player. She is going to go across to Smuggler's Cove. Let's have a look at the coast board. And, um, she can spend one investigation to get to Smuggler's Cove. And brilliant, she'll have a encounter there. Let's see what's in Smuggler's Cove. Groovy. After her, it'll be Eliza. Where's she going to go? I think, well, well, we'll give it a roll. And depending on what we get, I mean, if she has a low roll, she'll probably have to stay in the town centre. If she gets a good roll, then, you know, the world's her oyster. Shadowbrook is a oyster if she gets a good roll. She might be able to go as far as the old woods, the abandoned keep, the windmill or the manor. So we'll see how she does. Um, very dependent on her roll. And after her, it will be Sarah, the Bright Witch. She's going to use one investigation to go through the secret passage and she is going to go over to the monastery. The monastery is a good place to go. Uh, you can get items and stuff there, so that'd be pretty good. Um, she's not going to hang around here any more than uh, Vampire is, because they'd be lingering. So let's move them to their respective boards, and we can have a look at all the boards in play. Woo! -hoo! Right, so that worked out pretty good. Okay, so those are our plans for next turn. Um, hopefully we can get a few more investigation and um, we can start revealing secrets and stuff like that um, other than that things went okay I think possessed by madness wasn't too bad um, it's a bit grim that um, obviously poor old Valeria for example has got two wounds and Eliza's got one but that's the way the cookie crumbles um, so not too bad really not too bad i'll take that i'll take that for the first turn of a touch of evil the banshee so
thanks everybody for watching thanks for all the subscriptions thanks for all the views oh talking of views thank you very much for the views i'm at a hundred thousand views who'd have thought it in just over a year one hundred thousand views okay a few of those will be people who just like sort of stumbled onto the site thought what the hell is this and immediately logged out again but if you're out there, whether you've came, stumbled in by accident or you've stumbled in and stayed, thank you very much for all those views. 100,000, that is amazing. Thank you. Um, oh, as always, thanks very much to anybody who's gone across the board game links to upvote the site. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope that you all join me next time for turn two of A Touch of Evil, The Banshee. Until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.